Welcome back to Metropole TV, the first 24-hour news business channel here in Nairobi in Kenya. And this is The Smart Investor. I'm Ali Khan Sachi. It's glad, glad to have you back after the break. I've got her. somebody I call ubiquitous, Ali Hussein, my brother from Khalifi. Uh, he's the CEO of Fintechs. Uh, he's on the board of Longhorn Publishers. He's uh, involved with Demo Africa, which is a pan-African uh, um, VC uh, opportunity. He's the East African advisor to Kinesis Monetary System. Those were the two gentlemen who came in last week. Uh, Ali, you sit there ubiquitously looking at all this the world that we're looking at, the changing world. Give us a picture in your mind what's going on at a macro level and then let's dig into what you're looking at. You know, Ali, I always like to talk about this from a, from, from a bit of a historical perspective mm. because uh, I think it was Winston Churchill who said, we learn from history that we never learn from history. That's right. Um, back when... Uh, we started into in this digital space mm. uh, in Kenya 1998. But it was gobbledygook <laughs> then. I remember going to talk to people and they'd like, look at you, their eyes would glaze over. Completely. Off. I mean, I, I remember being one of the early employees of yes. Three Mice Interactive Media. Of course. That which, was is, which was one of the pioneer digital agencies then, mm. you know. And uh, we used to operate on dial-up. Oh, really? That Absolutely. one where you'd hear it pinging, You know, you, you used to <laughs> uh, plug in a telephone wire, uh, go to the loo, take a pee and come back and still doing those. <laughs> and fast forward to today, Ali. And what's amazing is that we're talking about 98, early 2000s. And the opportunities are still there. Mm. The opportunities are still there. I mean, I remember... Um, we, Three Mice was acquired by Africa Online. Yes, yes. I mean, Africa Online was a pioneer, uh, you know, ISP. ISP, yes. Uh, but uh, what is interesting about that time, Ali, mm. was <clears throat> Africa Online had a, a pan-African news platform. Mm. Never before been done. Never before, never again done. That's a today. big opportunity. Huge opportunity, Huge. Ali. Um, to just give you a flavor, mm. I, you know, uh, I was a manager. Um, my uh, the founders of Three Mice that includes uh, Ken Jorogi of Cellular today, yes. Paul Kukubo, who became the first CEO of the Kenya ICT board. Yes. Uh, so a lot of talent. Huge talent. I mean, we were at the bleeding edge, and, mm. you know. And um, so <clears throat> Africa Online decided when they were acquired by African Lex then. Yes. Which was sort of a VC coming from, uh, from London. Yes. And I don't remember the numbers, but I think... Uh, Ayisi Makatiani. That's where he got his capital exactly. from, right? Ayisi yeah. Makatiani. Uh, don't quote me on this, but I think the numbers were between 700 to a billion. Mm. Shillings. Shillings. Mm. That time. And that was a lot of money then. That was a lot of money then, but I think the biggest mistake the acquirers of Africa Online did is mm. killed the, the portal, yes. the news business. A few months later, um, maktoub.com. Yes, yes. This is the ones out of the Gulf. Out of the Gulf, based in Lebanon, I think. Mm. Got acquired by Yahoo. For? Oh. $85 million. <laughs> <laughs> now, but is that luck or is that no, being I mean, in the look, right place at the right time? Yes, I think being in the right place at the right time, but yep. I think not reading the signs of the times. Yes. I mean... Africa Online killed the portal. Yeah. Maktoub was a fraction the size of Africa Online. I mean, I recall uh, we were managing the transition and doing the, uh, the upgrade of mm. the portal. And 
we got a super expensive content management system uh, from Europe. Mm. And during that period, advertisers were knocking on doors. Wow. We didn't even have an advertising model then. <laughs> so, Ali, fast forward to today. Okay, now take us to today and tell us, give us the landscape, give us the opportunity, you know. So, so let's look at what I call the potential uh, disruptors. Yes. Who should have, with all the capital they have, with all the so-called talent they could have bought, uh, um, Nation Media Group. Yes. What do you make of Nation Media Group? Like, and I don't want to hit on Nation Media Group because they keep complaining that I hit on them. But the share price there has gone from 300 to 54. But Ali, look, I mean... I mean, to me, the market is, gives you the cleaner signal, right? So what is that signaling? What, what, because if you look at that tremendous real estate, Ali... Look, so... In the midst of a digital transformation, yes, the Nation Media Group goes and invests a billion shillings in a printing press. Yes, I mean, yeah, really. But that's because the Daily Nation was always their cash cow, right? That's really, if you look at the business, that was Ali, where the money was made. Ali, look, I'm not saying mm. that the, the newspaper, you mm. know. Yes. The, the pepper is going to die. I mean, look, you're using pepper. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm a recalcitrant <laughs> old man. Uh, but the <laughs> thing is this. If you look at some of their peers, look at the New York Times. Yes. Well, they, but they got subscription, right? In, in a way, New York Times, that was another busted flush. And suddenly it recovers. I think Trump recovered the New York Times. Yeah, but look. So digital transformation is about using your core assets yes. and transforming your business to the digital age. If you've got a legacy business, can you do that transformation? But that's exactly what the New York Times has done. Yes. Superlative uh, um, uh, journalism. Yes. And then plugging in a digital proposition that is almost second to none. So, so last year... Yes. Eight hundred million dollars yeah, digital oh yeah. revenue. No, no, it's it's a, it's a hugely profitable business. I think it was Carlos so, Slim who bought it exactly. for peanuts, and now he's made millions. So if you look at the local media, what would you price, be telling them? First, I'll be telling them, get out of the Google platform. Yeah. It's why are they just there? BS. What, what, why it's, are just, it's just BS, you know. I yeah. mean, Google. But, that's, but but that tells me, Ali, that they they don't get it. I mean, the fact I that don't, they're still there it they tells you they don't get it. Absolutely, they don't get it. Because, see... And they're reporting you, to people who don't get it. So, if you look at, if you look <laughs> at Google today... Yes. I think Google is going to start suffering. Mm. Because they've built an ecosystem, in a sense, profiting off people who are building content from scratch. That's right. But at some point, I think they've lost the plot. Mm. They're cannibalizing the very business that used to bring in the search mm. that they monetize. Mm. So if you look, first, the lack of transparency mm. in terms of how their revenue share. But again, you know, if, if I go, look, I don't want to be on nation. No, no, no. Or no. standard. Yeah. I'm just talking about But are there the disruptors media? coming in there, do you think, that have seen the media opportunity and are going to deliver media in a different way and disrupt those people? I'm not I'm not I'm not seeing I'm not seeing I'm not seeing any major disruptors okay. right now. I'm, as far as the media is concerned, it's it's regurgitating but the you've got a lot of these new things, you know, like Pulse and all these new mag online businesses, which which must have taken some P and L away. So, look, you've got to have a mixed model of mm. advertising revenue mm. and subscription, mm. good content. We have proven the New York Times, the uh, Wall Street Journals of this world, the Business Weeks, which were acquired by Bloomberg, they have proven that good content, yeah. people will buy good content. That's right. You know today you can buy, you can get 
a dollar a week yes. for New York Times content. That's correct. I mean, why the hell mm. is the local media not thinking like that? Or why, do, why don't they slice it? So you want to read an article, exactly. it's a micro payment Absolutely. of five bob or something like that. I don't so I am, I am totally sort of uh, uh, hooked up on this, you, mm. know, on, you know, online media. So they give you like three or four yes, free articles. Lock you in it. Yes. By the time you realize, you're hooked. Yeah. Paying that one dollar is not an issue. I mean, I am a director at Longhorn Publishers. Yes. And we are in the midst of a transformation. Mm. We have understood and we have realized that going forward, digital is going to be the place where we will earn our revenues. Mm. Um, and we are playing a Pan-African uh, play. We are not just playing Kenya because if you look if you look at the landscape of educational publishing, for, for example, for a long time, mm. we are sort of embedded with the government. Mm. You know, 50, 60% of our what revenues. What you mean, curriculum, curriculum and, books and, and books and all that. But increasingly, governments want to own the IP themselves. Mm. So where does that leave? Uh, um, players like Longhorn, you know. So, uh, if you look at what we are doing, say uh, Kiswahili, yeah, we are market leaders in Kiswahili. Yes. How many people speak it? Worldwide? Yeah. About 150 million. And now you got all the Rwandans as well. Exactly. So you've got Rwanda and South Africa. You've got South Africa. You've got diaspora. Mm. So. Our play now is how do we monetize? How do you address those markets? How do you address those markets? So, so this is a platform. You're talking about creating completely. a platform to deliver to all these markets. You, you could be an Uber of education. Com completely, Ali. Completely. <laughs> so, so that's on the publishing side. So let's go. So take us to banking. Banking. Right? I mean, this is where <clears throat> we see a lot of interest. I mean, what struck me last year, Ali, was this. I looked at Tala. I looked at branch, they were raising more capital in the capital markets than our tier one banks. Correct. What does that tell you? So, let's look at the talent numbers. Yeah. If you go on Google Apps, last time I checked a few months back, two million downloads. Of, of Tala? Of Tala application. In Kenya? In Kenya. Two million downloads. Now, take all the bank apps in Kenya put together, they don't, they don't get you to 2 million downloads. Is that right? Uh, that's a fact. Tala and Branch mm. put together mm. the downloads. So we'll talk about usage yes. in, you know, in a bit. But download means somebody wants to make use of it. Yeah. So then how, how do you get them to actually use. Mm -hmm. So, download is the first entry point. Yes, so you, that's, between, the, that's stage one. Yes, between Tala and Branch, I'm probably talking about three million plus downloads. Mm. And that's a conservative number. I'm happy to be corrected on Twitter. Yes. Anybody who, <laughs> tell, who uh, can, can um, uh, you know, tell me I'm wrong. We'll get them in next yes. time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Bring all the bank apps, mm. all of them, including the big boys. I don't think they're great to get to 3.5 million. These two companies are five years old on average, four years old on average, okay? They have raised a total of maybe about 250 million in the mm. last two to three years, and they're still hungry for cash, mm. all right? So where's the opportunity? I think the opportunity is still, nobody is touching the micro and uh, small medium enterprises. But they're all looking at it. They're all looking they're, at like it. That's like the holy grail. Look, the central bank was trying to do yeah. something there. You, so let's talk about Stawi. And, um, you know, I'm a member of an online group called the Digital Innovation Group. And we are going to be having an interesting conversation mm. on Friday mm. regarding Stawi. Mm. So Stawi is this uh, conglomeration of five banks backed by the central bank. Yes. That's KCB, CBA, NIC. Well, you know, C I mean, we, 
we might as well just say four banks. <laughs> <laughs> CBA, NIC, Diamond Trust, mm. and uh, Cobank. Yes. So, if you look at the whole African region, mm. the gap of SME lending, SMEs who want money to advance their businesses, yes. to grow their business, the gap is $89 billion. Across the continent. Across the continent. That's a World Bank report. Mm. So these five banks have come together, and they're going to be lending between 30,000 to 200,000. So they're, they're, they're covering the micro to very small mm. medium enterprises. But let's talk about those SMEs that are about to take off that are called, there's a term, um, uh, scaling, mm. you know. Mm. You, those require an interesting attention, not just funding, mm. but, you know, across the board. Um, last week, during the CIO FinTech event, there was a gentleman from the Kenya uh, Investment Authority, mm. and I challenged him. I told him, as far as us... He's coming mm, on Monday. Uh, fantastic. Mm. Interesting. Mm. I would have loved to be there. Mm. <laughs> or at least a fly on the wall. Mm. I challenged him and I asked him, there's this perception that the Kenya Investment Authority is only about FDI. Yes. Foreign direct investment. Mm. And it's, there's clarity in terms of the <coughs> you know, incentives and stuff like that. But how about foreign domestic, I mean, domestic capital? Capital. How about that? Yes. Every day, mm. a Kenyan is investing his time and money mm. into new business. Uh, I was looking at a report by Sierra Leone, I think, and they were saying Kenya, Uganda, Kenya Nigeria, and South Africa, mm. uh, their entrepreneurial sector yes. uh, does a lot in terms of uh, uh, generating jobs. Mm. So in Kenya, it's about 7.5 million. What is the investment authority doing? About Can that? we get some clarity? Mm. All right? Can we get some clarity? So if you are talking about X amount, you have a tax uh, holiday, you have a tax heaven. How about domestic? Mm. Now, so you're saying we're being neglected? Completely, with all due respect. Yes. Uh, so this idea of Stawi, I think, is a brilliant idea. Mm. It's a brilliant idea. But let's take it to the next level. There is a tire of Kenyan and African SMEs that, with the right assistance, can move to the next level. Mm. We are allowing foreign investors mm. to invest in our tech startups. Mm. Last year. But Ali, is, it, is, is that in part because a lot of the capital is the older people who don't get it, right? I mean, you've made your money in real See. estate, you're comfortably off, you've got five houses in Runda, you come along and say, look, I want a million dollars off you to put it in this hot new startup. So it's, it's a two-way traffic, It could Ali. be gobbledygook. It's, it's, it's a two-way traffic. You and I need to do yeah. a lot more work yes. educating these, what I call Kenyan old money. Yeah. These guys are more comfortable mm putting money in a Kitengela plot. Yes. You know, buy 10 acres and some Might not be such a good idea these days. You know, but I, I, don't think I don't think they get it yet. The, the issue about land, people think, is that it will never depreciate. Mm. But I think we also need to do a bit more work yes. in terms of sensitizing them on the opportunities. So last year, 35 billion shillings mm. was invested in Kenyan startups. How much was invested by locals? Uh, I think it's, uh, your, your guess is as good as mine. I, I, have, those, I have those numbers here. Mm. Uh, Celluland, 47.5 million. Oh, okay, okay, so that was the biggest ticket. Uh, Celluland, 47.5 million dollars. Yeah. Uh, Twiga, yes, he's 17 well, million dollars. Um, M Copper, $10 million. Mm. 
uh, Africa's talking 8.5 million dollars. Mm. So here you have a mix of African startups. Yes. So please, let me explain this. Mm. You have African based startups. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know and then they... and then you have African startups. Mm. So the Jumias of this world, those are African-based startups. Yes. I mean, let's be clear about that. But Ali, also, let's be clear. They could not have raised that kind of capital in the Nairobi Securities Exchange, with all due respect, when they've accumulated losses of a billion dollars. Psychologically, this is also another hurdle that we've got to get people across. This is the thing I'm, I'm talking yep. about. We need to sensitize mm. uh, uh, our local investment community mm. with the help of uh, the Nairobi Stock Exchange and all that, mm. that you look at some of these some, some of these tech startups in a different way. Mm. You know, you're looking at potential. Yeah. Uh, going forward, you're looking at the economist the had a great article saying you're looking for a business that can blitz scale. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So you, I mean, for me, Africa's talking is an interesting story. Yes. You know, uh, well, is that Samuel me? Gikandi and his partner, MIT grads, Kenyans, came back. And guess what? Well, it's a very unsexy business. Mm. Is SMS. Yes. You know, they are now starting to move to payments. Mm. But it was SMS, bulk SMS. They just built a superb online platform, great user experience, and they were arbitrating SMS. Wow. $8.5 million raised. World Bank is one of those guys mm. who... So you have these s sort of uh, uh, African startups that are starting to come up. And what I'm telling my fellow Kenyans and Africans is that there is huge opportunity. Mm. However, even on one side, the startup uh, industry needs to make, mm. uh, to sort of bridge the gap in terms of information. Mm. So if you look at the banking sector now, uh, the really, the guys that are, with, uh, I mean, wiping the floor yes. with everybody else, yes. is the established players. Yes. Despite the talas and the branches, mm. so we are looking at the report from Credit Info yes. the, other, the other week. 93% of all mobile lending is from established, mm. regulated players. Yes. So they've done well Absolutely. to, they've to done have well. gone and embraced they've, that new they, ecosystem. Uh, they've done well. Now, the elephant in the room. Yes. These two players, mm. um, KCB, m -Pesa and m yes, uh, CBA. CBA. These are all operating on the m -Pesa platform. Yes. So m -Pesa is completely embedded in that ecosystem. But that was the genius of m -Pesa. Completely, yeah. completely. Then on, on, on one side, then you have uh, Equity Bank. Yes. Equity Bank decided to go the MVNO way. Mm. But now we are seeing a detent between equity and, and, Safaricom. and Safaricom. So, you know, the, the issue here is now, are we finding ourselves in a situation where you have one platform that all bankers are using? What happens to Pesalink? Mm. Which is owned by, by the, the Kenya bank. Bankers Association. It's almost like, uh, with all due respect to my, I have a lot of banker friends. It's almost like, uh, they have totally decided to neglect Pesalink. Mm. And that was something that was supposed to start addressing the M-Pesa hegemony. But... Ali, I've run out of time. You I could have gone on for like, <laughs> you, you've taken me down, you've made me think about all these things. It's we must do this again, Ali. You are most welcome any time yeah. to be our big thinker yes. in this space. We really appreciate it, Ali. It was a Thank pleasure. You. Thank you, Ali. Next time you're going to come and tell us where we should invest and where we're going to make great returns. Agreed. Pleasure. Cheers, Ali. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. All right. That was Ali Hussein, the CEO of Fintechs, board member of Longhorn Publishers. Uh, East African advisor for Kinesis, the monetary system we heard about last week. 
Uh, it's been a real pleasure being with you this evening. This was Metropole TV. This was The Smart Investor. My name is Alikan Satru. Look forward to seeing you same time tomorrow.